From Trek Travel in Mallorca. Welcome, Welcome to, to the GCN, GCN Show! Woo! Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up, we recap a brilliant start to the Giro d'Italia in the Netherlands. Plus, we give you the answer once and for all to the question Are disc brakes dangerous? We've got some bonkers hacks and bodges, but some legitimate tech too. And of course, we have got all of your usual favourites. And Tom is back from the Giro. How was it, mate? Excellent. Still got my Giro t-shirt. Nice. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Tech of the week now. And firstly, we found this very cool bit when we were actually out filming in Mallorca the other week. Now it is amazing what you see when you're out cycling and today on the roads of Mallorca a guy cycled past us wearing a mask and we thought that's a bit strange but thought no more of it. And then Andrew here stopped by because Andrew is one of the founders of VO2 Master and that mask is in fact a prototype portable VO2 testing device. So. Andrew, perhaps you can explain a little bit, because that is quite an incredible looking piece of kit. <laughs> so this is actually, a, a, like, as you mentioned, it's a portable wireless VOT machine. So same as what you used to see in a lab with the long tubes and wires and hookups and, and contraptions. And we've shrunk it down, taken all the tubes away, taken all the moving parts away, and made it so it sends the data straight so to So we are getting phone. a direct reading of what? Of the Onto your smart gases. Yeah, so it'll measure respiratory frequency, tidal volume. Those two combined make a ventilation number. There's an oxygen sensor inside which measures the amount of oxygen being breathed out. And from those you can calculate the volume of oxygen consumed and that's the number that you see down at the bottom there. That is incredible. And so for GCM viewers that aren't perhaps as familiar with what you would do with VO2 max yeah. data, how would that be used by you know, an ordinary cyclist down the road? So lots of people have heard about VO2 max testing, yeah. which is scientifically challenged in modern times because there's some evidence that VO2 max is not as important and, that, and that's exactly our take on it. But the, the information from oxygen consumption is extremely useful in determining respiratory fitness, cardiovascular fitness, and peripheral fitness. So the amount of oxygen that you deliver to the muscles and the amount of oxygen your muscles can consume gives an indication of the amount of power you can generate on the bike. From human performance to motor performance now. Just surfaced on Kickstarter is the geo-orbital front wheel. Now, when I say just surfaced, it has already raised over half a million dollars. Yeah. Seems like a really, really good idea. It's a front wheel, like I said, gives you up to 500 watts extra. So you just attach the wheel, attach the throttle to your bars, and away you go. 20 miles an hour for up to 50 miles. Yeah. Now, amusingly, it is almost the exact opposite of the air hub that we featured the other week. And in all seriousness, you've got to be a little bit careful by using a quick release, I would have thought. But uh, otherwise, it just looks completely nuts. Which reminds me actually of another thing that I found whilst I was messing around on Kickstarter last week. Check these out. You'll be very, very pleased to hear, I know, that bike balls are actually in production, having also reached their target. Yeah, people are actually buying them. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, now, Tom, this last one, uh, as a connoisseur of socks. I've yeah. been asked to set, ask you what you think of these. Um, I think they're righteous. Thank you. Yeah. I, I guess that's a compliment. I thought you'd like this. Castelli posted on their Instagram feed their new, I don't know whether they're prototype, but you certainly can't buy them yet, socks as being used by the Candel team in the Giro d'Italia. Perhaps you could talk us through them. Well, looking at them, they're clearly very, very bright. They're also very high, like that goes above the bottom of the guy's calf who's yeah. using them. And they don't look like your standard cycling sock, do they? They don't look like a cotton or polyester mix, or whatever. They very much look like they've got some sort of compression thing going on. They do. One thing is for certain though, is that that Cannondale rider with his really long shorts and his ridiculously long socks is going to have the worst tan lines in the whole of the Giro d'Italia. Looking, looking good. Thanks. Cheers. Got a bit of tan. It's time now for caption competition. Last week, we gave you this photo of Chris Froome and the winner is, wait for it. It's Light Rody, whose caption was, Chris Froome trying to look at other people's stems through their thighs. That is very good, actually. Good, Make sure you get in touch and we will send you some GCN swag, which I believe is a bubble hat at the moment. This week's caption photo is this one of Tom Last riding on Matt Stevens' wheel, which might give you some idea about why he's pulling a face. 
you want to get us started, mate? Yeah, uh, legend. That is, that's a good caption. I can't argue with that. <sighs> I'm sure some of you will in the comments, but... Yeah. That's it. If you uh, want to enter the caption competition, all you've got to do is submit your entry in the comment section below this video. And you too might win a beanie. It's the Giro, the first Grand Tour of the year, and the first stage of the race could not have been any closer. Primoz Roglic, who was a former international ski jumper before he turned to cycling, looked to have the stage. But that was before home hero Tom de Moulin put in an amazing ride to beat Roglic by just one hundredth of a second. Do you think the reason Roglic is so good at time trialing is because he's at home on the skis? Skis? Good. Uh, right, sorry mate. <laughs> sorry. sorry, we're back, we're back. Yeah, let's rewind a little bit to 2014, okay? Yep. Marcel Cattell was the man to beat in Grand Tour sprint stages. He won four stages of the Tour, two of the Giro, and it looked on that form like he was going to have Grand Tour sprint stages sewn up for years. But then, then 2015 happened. Yeah, there was a bit of illness, something not quite right with his team, and he didn't even start a Grand Tour last year. So, he really had everything to prove going into the season, and the question was, could he, could he turn things around? Yeah. Well, a move to Ethics, where he slotted into Mark Cavendish's spot as team leader for the sprints, seems to have just revitalised his career in 2016. And he won both stages two and three in dominant fashion. I mean, it looked like they weren't even contesting. No, it was incredible. Now, as might be expected, an early break went on both stages. And we've got to give a special mention to Martin Tillingi, local rider of Lotto NL Jumbo, former mountain biker, and also the Netherlands' sexiest vegetarian from what? about 2006. Yeah, genuine fact there. Martin Tillingi was the Netherlands' sexiest vegetarian. Because uh, And he not only got second in the points competition now, he's also leading the King of the Mountains. So fair play to him for that. It must be really difficult to get motivation to race a bike once you've been voted the country's sexiest vegetarian. Well, yeah. Fair play, Martin. Fair play, Martin. On both stages two and three, the lead-outs to the sprints were just were really chaotic. Very mm. few teams appeared to get anything organised. And Kittel was one of the riders who actually looked like he completely lost his own sprint train. Yeah. Which does make the dominance of his wins all the more impressive. Yeah, it does. And to be fair, He's looking pretty good in time trials as yeah. well. A swift ride in the prologue has meant that he's now in the pink jersey following the time bonuses he got for his stage wins. And we've talked quite a lot recently about sprint finishes and the importance of aerodynamics, especially when you look at the new generation of sprinters, guys like Caleb Ewan, who pretty much, you know, let's be honest, gets his nose onto his front tyre. Then you compare him to Marcel Kittel, and Kittel looks about double the size of Ewan on the bike. I suspect he probably is. Possibly close is. To double. And just, you know, for, Sheer brute force just blasts off the front of the bunch. Yeah, so does brute force beat marginal gains and aerodynamics? And in fact, perhaps more importantly, is anyone going to come close to Kittel this year in the sprints? Make sure you let us know what you think in the comments section down below. How are you feeling about your GC predictions, Sorry. Oh, pretty good. I, I said Tom de Moulin, and he can't have done much better, really. Won the uh, prologue and two days in the pink jersey. Looking good. It, do, it does look good, but interestingly, Velo News, here we go, here's a quote. I'm not here with a GC goal. Well, yeah, obviously he's, he's saying that now because he's just trying to bluff, isn't he? <clears throat> and then, okay, if we go to Giant Alpsin's very own press release. The general classification will not be my target for this year's edition. I will be focusing primarily on the time trials. Well, yeah. And it's a really good job that Vincenzo Nibali is looking so good because uh, he's obviously been my favourite for a long time now, just generally. Since <laughs> July 2014, to be yeah, specific. Yeah, pr pretty much, I see, yeah. Anyway, good luck. Thanks, mate. <laughs> it's time now for Hack forward slash bodge of the week. And this week, I think it's fair to say there are probably more bodges than hacks, but you'll have to wait and see. First up, Matty Dobbing on Facebook. Nah, that looks like a hack to me. Check it out, a bike rack for his motorbike. Is that cardboard or wood? I'm assuming it's wood. But that looks very cool. Very cool. And nice bike, by the way. Good job. Yeah. Next up is Efex Magne, who got a local Sapotero, so a shoe repair man, to save his old Shimano shoes. Now, for me, that is a bit of a bodge, but it, it crosses, it, it's on the board. Well, it's, it's been effective. done in such a nice way. It I'd say good. that's probably a hack. I don't know what happened to your shoes in the first place. And in fact, I don't know whether you could do that to a carbon sole, but still, cool. Cool. good to get a bit more life out of your shoes. All right then, we've got one from Raphael Reynard, who says, uh, I've just broken my frame, so I decided to do this little hack or bodge, you choose. Oh, I think that's a hack. Yeah, I think that's cool. Check it out. That is one of the best toilet roll holders I think I've ever seen. Definitely. 
Next up, Wilco Van Dorp. How to attach your saddle without a seat post? In Holland, they know. Yeah, and they do. They well, they know something. That is, it 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 is interesting. Yeah, I've never seen that instead of a seat post before. But uh, some still. places you don't want splinters. No, that is just crazy. Right. Okay. Second to last, Peter Kenyon, classy mudguard, seen outside their Angel Station in London. That is quite classy. No, it's not classy in the slightest. That's a, that's a massive bodge. But still, I suspect it's probably effective. Yeah. Finally, we've got this one from Matthias Fredriksson. Possibly the greatest hack of all time on GCN, if possibly a little bit of a bodge. So, as seen on the streets of Bogota, Colombia, we have this bike that has become a motorbike. It looks like it's almost a police motorbike. Let's doesn't say it? what it is, Tom. It is a motorbike. A motor. It is a motorbike, but it is a bike, like you say, that has become a motorbike. It's just the ultimate hybrid. Look at that. There's a petrol engine on there. There's motorbike handlebars. This looks like amazing. a crock pot or a barbecue on the back, but presuming it's just like a pannier to keep something. <laughs> That's just. Someone must have spent days of their life making that. Can you imagine? That is brilliant. I imagine that the brakes on that, which are V brakes from this photo, just there, are oh, probably no. not, not sufficient to hold it back once you get pedaling and get the engine running downhill. But Matthias, thank you. Yeah, that is it's brilliant. Excellent. Keep them coming in using Please the hashtag do. GCN hack on Facebook and on Twitter and on Instagram. Are you on Snapchat as well? So you're, you're young enough, aren't you? Yeah, me and Dan. Dan's not young enough, mate. Don't, no, Dan's not Snapchat. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we have some excellent news from Taranga in New Zealand. Yeah, so officials there have reported they have seen a dramatic increase in the number of cyclists in the city, whilst seeing a dramatic decrease in the number of cycling accidents at the same time. How good is that? Very good news. So what it means is that more cyclists might mean fewer bike-related accidents out on the road. More cyclists means safer cycling. Good news. Except, now I must say except, because in Taiwan, they've found that an increase in e-bike sales has led to a steep increase in accidents there. So Road CC, who put this article together, found that according to police reports, one in 120 e-bikes is involved in an accident. And this has led to the Taiwanese police and authorities to consider making e-bikes a light motorbike, which would require a license and a helmet to ride them. Yeah, well, the whole e-bike thing is already a hot topic in mountain bike, isn't it? And it's not hard to see why, because a 500 watt motor can get you going pretty fast. We I mean, just look at Bradley Wiggins, for example. He's got a 500 watt motor built into his legs, yeah. and he goes exceedingly fast. Yeah. Well, anyway, and Ryder, who he's putting out power, but in a different way, if you see what I mean, is US pro Zach Allison. He finished a recent stage at the Tour of the Gila on a 1982 specialized stump jumper mountain bike. Yeah, that's right. And not only did he finish it, he did the last 4K on it. Because it turns out that Zach had a crash, wrecked his bike, resigned to his fate, took off his cycling shoes, put his bike on his shoulder and started to walk to the line. Only then, he had a second thought. He flagged down a passing spectator, swapped his 2016 Giant for said Specialized that's 33 years old, and then finished the race. How good is that? That's really cool. Just look at the bike though, that is absolutely yeah, stunning. It's a very cool I mean, bike. I'm sure it wasn't exactly an upgrade from the Giant, but pristine, yeah. pristine. 1982, so older than both you and I, son. It is, Tom, it is. But slightly younger than Matt, who predates mountain bikes. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Let's get it sorted. Let me just walk down this bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you turn that camera off a minute? <laughs> We've actually had some really cool stuff sent in this week. This is from Shay Gribben. <laughs> oh, God, that's <laughs> Lloydy. Who Sorry. has done a coffee painting of our very own Daniel Lloyd. Thanks, Shay. And also, you've made him look really quite attractive. Uh, in fact, I believe you, you've channeled a bit of Hugh Jackman for that. Uh, now, one more thing sent in by a GCM viewer. This is very cool too. So we asked on Facebook whether anyone could send in pictures of Peter Sagan, pictures, stamps, Peter Sagan stamps, we've got them. There we go, so thank you very much. And uh, it was sent in by Martin, uh, and he has said that he's actually putting some of these on eBay because he's trying to raise some money to buy a new drivetrain upgrade. So if you fancy some Peter Sagan stamps, Check out Martin's eBay page, whatever that may be, and uh, maybe you can get him enough money to buy some SRAM Ready Tap or something, which would be very nice. I've just, Shay, I've noticed one really excellent detail that you've added in, which is the grey beard and moustache hair. Yeah. Well right, done. enough of yeah. Dan, put it away now, we don't want it anymore.
So what about the disc debate then? Well, we asked you last week if you had ever had an injury as a direct result of a disc break. And after the video and the Facebook video have been watched over 120,000 times, and we've gone through over 1,000 responses, I'm pretty sure we've got quite a good archive of data right there. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that we do. And we scoured through all the replies and we found just two, two responses where there were some genuinely quite nasty sounding injuries. So clearly there is a risk to disc brakes, however small it may be. And the question is, should you be worried about disc brakes on road bikes? And for me, the answer is a definite no, you shouldn't be. No, I agree with you there. Two incidents out of 120,000 people how many thousands of bike rides that represents. That's a pretty small minority. Very small. It is. Uh, there were actually a couple of things though that did flag up quite regularly. Firstly, that you should be careful standing next to your bike at the bottom of a long descent. More than a few people have singed their legs next to their hot disc rotors. And then also, you've got to be a little bit careful when working on your bike. It turns out that our own Donny from GMBN is not the only person to have got his fingertip stuck in a rotor when he's working on his bike. So be a little bit careful, just like you would taking your pedals off around your chain rings. There were also some genuinely very, very amusing comments. Yeah, there were, there were. Let's get with those. Some good bands. Disc brake bands. Come on, there we go. Uh, right, first up, Sean Malloy. Uh, As a collegiate cyclist, I can assure you that we can't afford these fancy brakes of disc, but we are perfectly capable of injuring ourselves without them. Next up, Jason Smith. My entire town was wiped out by a single Shimano rotor. <laughs> Matt Dar said, I went off the road and my disc brakes sliced through a line of people waiting for a bus, decapitating seven of them. The wheel then kept on spinning, carved a <clears throat> shape into the pavement before I recovered and kept on riding. That does sound particularly nasty, we, isn't it? We've asked Matt to provide the evidence of the, of the shape yeah, carved yeah. into the pavement. Finally, Peter Whittle. I was out for a bike picnic and hung my bike in a tree so I could spin up the disc to slice salami. Please see the GCM video. Yeah. I put my knuckle in the spokes. That hurt a bit. Good sandwich, though. Yeah, well, as long as your salami sandwich was good, Pete, I suppose that's fine. But yeah, anyway, so there we go. We can put that particular debate to rest. It's time now for Wattage Bazooka. There we go. There you go, mate. And our pro cycling Wattage Bazooka, thanks to a really cool Twitter account, Pro Cyclist Data, goes to Brian Cockard, stages one and two of the four days of Dunkirk. Stage two is perhaps the more impressive where he put out. 1,259 watts in his final sprint. More For 12 seconds. 12 That's seconds. a prolonged bazooka, that is. It's a big bazooka. Fair play, Brian. That is some serious wattage. Now, the GCN viewer wattage bazooka. This week goes to Matthias M. Mayer from Norway, who has said, uh, when your chain ring suddenly disintegrates whilst out riding. And look, there's the picture evidence. There's no arguing with that. He's got to put out a wattage bazooka to bend your chain rings. Although, it is, your, it is your inner chain ring, your little ring that's disintegrated. If it was your big ring that disintegrated, now that's some serious wattage bazooka going on. Nevertheless, we're impressed. We are impressed. Imagine if it was a 55 tooth that you could bend. Wow, that's some power. Right, also, a first for Watch Bazooka, we've got an honourable mention this week to Jed K, because he has sent in a wattage cannon. So no riding involved, just a picture of his bike, which looks very nice, and a cannon. Uh, so there we go, a wattage cannon. Thanks, Jed. Yeah, not eligible for the competition, but you yeah, know, still. Nice photo. Dom's tweet of the week now, and Dom has chosen two tweets this week. I'll get you started with this one from Mark Brown, who's tweeted, proof that Daniel Lloyd won, got to the top of Sacalobra. Well, you... It's proof that Lloyd was at the top of Sacalobra. Yeah. There's no evidence as to how he got there, uh, Mark, but still. Anyway, nice uh, selfie. I'm sorry we've uh, photobombed that. Uh, Pierre Carey. Uh, is the second tweet that Dom's chosen. He said, there are quite original podium girls at the end of 23, Vuelta a Bidasoa. Uh, by the way, this is one of my favorites of the year. Uh, yeah. Comment of the week now, and we have had some absolute crackers under our videos this week, so thank you very much for getting involved in the comment section. Under the GCN show last week, this one, Vince Pilot said, uh, the guy on the back of the speed record tandem got blown off. And he does actually look like he's been blown off. That's good. I like this one underneath, how to read the road for safer cycling. It's from Simon A, who hates it when pedestrians cross the street in front of him without looking. 
he spends a lot of money on his sexy lycra. It's true, actually. I do love it when you catch a cyclist. Uh, we've all done it, looking at themselves in their reflection as they're riding past oh, them. I uh, absolutely love that. Anyway, because we all look sexy lycra, like don't we? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. Checking your form out. It's like a cheap bike fit. All right, lastly, uh, under the stage one preview, uh, they've covered logs with concrete and called them speed bumps. Matt didn't even notice. Maybe it's just psychological. Yeah, he was struggling on the pump track there, wasn't he, mate? He was struggling on the pump track a little bit. It's all action. Oh, my rock tracks come off. <laughs> oh, it always the way, isn't it? <laughs> on the channel this week, then, on Wednesday, we've got How to Sprint Faster. Now, we're not suggesting that you ignore your rivals completely. After all, you do want to beat them all to the finish line. But what you should do, once you've committed to your final sprint, is fully concentrate on your own effort, getting all the power you can through the pedals so you reach the finish line as quick as you possibly can. On Thursday, we've got the five hardest zero stages of all time. Oh, looking forward to that one. And on Friday, it's Ask GC Anything number 12. Yeah, on Saturday we've got Rafa Micah's Pro Bike, his S-Works Tarmac. Then on Sunday we've got how much faster is it to pace yourself up a climb. And let it be said, that video really, really hurt to make. So we hope you enjoy that one. Then on Monday, slightly slower, I get to show you how to service your shifters after someone asked the question in the comment section. So there we go, your answer. On Tuesday, it's the GCN show and it will be from Italy. From the Giro d'Italia, welcome to the GCN show. Co-starring Anthrax. Yeah, baby. That's right, we're filming it in Florence because alongside all of this content, we will be giving you Giro d'Italia related videos every single day as well. So it's quite a busy week. A bumper week. It's time now for Extreme Corner. Oh, yes. This week is thanks to Orbea Enduro rider Marco Uriati. Take it away. <laughs> Tell you what, riding uphill on the road is rarely extreme, but that was very impressive. That was very cool. It was, was yeah. That's some serious skills on display. Well, mate, we're filming the GCN show in Italy next week, or you are at least, so you better, you better get packing. It's true. I'm quite excited. I'm going to Tuscany to ride my push bike and make some videos about cycling. So tough, isn't it? It is, yeah. And one thing though, mate, I will be packing a t-shirt very much like that if I can get it back from Lloydie. But if you like those t-shirts, our Giro Special Edition, then make sure you head over to the GCN shop to buy yours now because stocks are pretty limited. We only ordered a limited run, so get it before it sells out. Now, videos. It's the end of the GCN show, so I'm sure you'll be wanting more GCN content. If you click just up there, then you get through to our Giro d'Italia playlist where all of the content that we're bringing back from the race is in one handy spot. And this one is really important. It's how to read the road for safer cycling. It's down there. That's right. Before going to either of those, do make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, just click on the globe 